Sa pagpapatuloy ng aralin patungkol kay Epaphrodito sa banal na kasulatan at kung ano ang pwede nating matutunan sa kanya. Last time I said that Epaphrodito reminded the people of the power of the gospel to penetrate the heart of a sinner and convict them of their sin of unbelief so they could trust the Lord Jesus as Savior. Yes, Felix was now a believer in the Lord Jesus and a trophy of God's grace. The church at Philippi was one of Paul's favorite. He had been to the city, fellowship with the saints, and ministered to them on at least three occasions, and one of his traveling co-worker, Dr. Luke, had some association with the city. On the Apostle Paul's second missionary journey, he was accompanied by Silas and Timothy. In response to the Macedonian call, they went to Philippi and planted a church in that city. Dr. Luke apparently lived in Philippi at the time he stayed behind and continued the work in the newly established church in the city. During Paul's third missionary journey, he had lengthy, almost three-year stay at Ephesus. The ministry of Paul and his co-worker, Timothy, was so effective that all they which dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. Acts chapter 19, verse 10. After the near riots in the theater, Paul thought it's best to leave Ephesus, so he departed to Macedonia. More than likely, his first stop was Philippi. After a ministry in Macedonia, and apparently Illyricum, Romans chapter 15, verse 19, he went to Greece or Achaia. After three months in Corinth, he returned to Macedonia and rejoined Dr. Luke in Philippi. They and six other brethren accompanied them to Jerusalem and the collection of the saints in the holy city. The church at Philippi was dear to Paul's heart. He enjoyed the fellowship in the gospel, Philippians chapter 1, verse 5, that they shared for over 10 years and knew they cared for him. One of the individuals he valued in this fellowship was Epaphroditus. When they first met and when and how Epaphroditus came to faith, we are not told as well. Most likely it was not the Apostle Paul who led him to the faith in the Lord as his Savior because he would have called Epaphroditus his son in the faith. So he did to Timothy and Titus. Paul only calls him a brother. Paul also identifies Epaphroditus as a fellow soldier, Philippians chapter 2, verse 25, as he does Clement and other saints from the church at Philippi. These were the individuals who labored with the apostle as he and his team proclaimed the gospel in Macedonia and various occasions. The saints at Philippi sent a financial gift to the Apostle Paul while he was under house arrest in Rome. He had lost everything when he, Dr. Luke, and Aristarchus were shipwrecked in Malta. Perhaps Dr. Luke wrote a letter to the assembly at Philippi. If he wrote the letter from Rome, he probably mentioned that the rent was high in Eternal City. This was not the first time the believers in Philippi sent Paul a gift. They sent him two gifts while he was in Thessalonica. Philippians chapter 4, verse 16. And then again, when he was in Corinth, it's time they gave sacrificially out of their poverty. Sa wikang Tagalog ay ganito ang ating mababasa. Dumana sila ng matinding kahirapan at ito'y isang mahigpit na pagsubok sa kanila. Ngunit sa kabila ng kanilang paghihikahos, masayang masaya pa rin sila at bukas ang palad sa pagbibigay. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 2 The church at Philippi appointed Epaphroditus as their sent one to take the money to Paul. Philippians chapter 4, verse 18 Most likely he would have had others to go with him, not only for accountability but also to protect the money 
since this is the pattern in the early church. Epaphroditus and his friends made this trip during the winter. He might have picked up pneumonia or he could have eaten tainted food at one of the inns. This condition might explain why he got deathly sick and almost died. Philippians chapter 2 verses 27 and verse 13. The Apostle Paul was under house arrest in Rome and more than likely confined to a rented apartment. Ministering to him was Dr. Luke and some other brethren, Colossians chapter 4 verses 7 to 14 and Philemon verses 23 and 24. The Philippian church sent a financial gift with Epaphroditus and his team and referred to him as one who ministered to my needs or in Tagalog upang magdala ng inyong kaloob at upang makatulong sa akin. The implication of that statement was that Epaphroditus was to stay in Rome and join the Apostle Paul's team and work with him, even though he was under house arrest. There was one problem. Epaphroditus got deathly sick when he arrived in Rome or while he was in the city working with Paul. The Apostle had a dilemma on his hands. He was preparing for his defense before Nero and he also had a person with a near fatal sickness on his hands who may have also been homesick. That he said in Philippians chapter 2, verse 26, Sabik na sabik na siya sa inyong lahat. And worried about the believers at home because they heard he was sick. What to do? Fortunately, for both Epaphroditus and Paul, God was merciful and intervened in the situation by Healing Epaphroditus, that was one less thing Paul had to be concerned about. Paul also had another concern on his heart in that he had heard about the seeds of division that had been planted in the church of Philippi. Two sisters, Judea and Sintiche, were in conflict with each other and Paul needed to implore them to be of one mind in the Lord. That was he would write a letter to the church at Philippi about their fellowship in the gospel in chapter 1, verse 5. Being of one mind and having the mind of Christ in Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 to 11, and have it directed to these two sisters who did not get along. The letter carrier that would take this epistle back would be none other than Epaphroditus, Philippians chapter 2, verses 25 and 28. The people in the assembly at Philippi who were worried about him would rejoice when they saw him again. Paul would be less sorrowful because Epaphroditus was one less concern for him as he prepared for his defense before Nero. The Apostle Paul was probably aware that some in the assembly at Philippi would think that Epaphroditus did not accomplish the mission that the church commissioned him to do join forces with Paul as they engage in spiritual warfare in Rome. Paul gave a command to the veterans in the assembly. Kaya sinabi niya na tanggapin ninyo siya ng buong galak bilang isang tunay na lingkod ng Panginoon. Igalang ninyo ang mga taong katulad niya. Not only were they to receive him but also to hold him in high esteem that he said, Muntik na siyang mamatay alang-alang sa gawain para kay Kristo. Itinaya niya ang kanyang buhay sa paglilingkod sa akin upang mapunuan ang hindi ninyo kayang gampanan. One commentator points out that Epaphroditus was no coward but a courageous person willing to take enormous risk, ready to play with very high stakes in order to come to the aid of a person in need but rather hazarded it to do for Paul and the cause of Christ what other Philippian Christians did not or could not do. Paul concludes that this section is stating that Epaphroditus risked his life. Kaya sinabi niya na itinaya niya ang kanyang buhay sa paglilingkod sa akin upang mapunan ang hindi niyo kayang gampanan. Lessons from the life of Epaphroditus 
there are at least four lessons we can learn from the life of this battle-tested soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ. First, he was a brother to the Apostle Paul. Paul used that term in a metaphorical sense to indicate that they were in the same spiritual family, the family of God by faith alone, in the Lord Jesus Christ alone. Have you trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior? And do you know the assurance of sins forgiven and the guarantee of a home in heaven? Epaphroditus did and knew these truths. Second, the Apostle Paul characterized Epaphroditus as a selfless person, one with the mind of Christ who esteemed others better than himself. He demonstrated this selfless by volunteering to go to Rome and help out the Apostle Paul in his time of need. When we consider the Christian life, do we ask ourselves, what's in it for me? Or do we ask ourselves, how can I be of service to others? Epaphroditus sought to serve other people. Third, Epaphroditus worked on a philosophy. It is better to remain active than to succumb in idleness. The word retirement was not in his vocabulary. Yes, he may have put his 25 years of service in the Roman army and he had his bronze retirement diploma. But if that was the case, perhaps he had the same attitude as some Christians today who use the phrase, I'm not retired, just refocused. When Epaphroditus retired as a soldier in the imperial army, he refocused his life as a soldier of the cross engaged in spiritual warfare. Have we refocused our lives in order to be engaged in this spiritual warfare? And finally, Epaphroditus took great risk for the sake of the gospel. Exactly what he did in gambling with his life, we are not told, but I'm sure he will be greatly rewarded at the judgment seat of Christ for his risk-taking. Will we gamble our lives for the sake of the gospel? Well, if you want to support my channel, just look at some areas where you can do it. 